So what we came up with is actually using the tool Zoom to interact so you can have a face-to-face -face, uh, interaction and then also playing cash flow online. So again, we're an investment firm. So, and it's a fun game to play. It's just, it's humorous. It's, it's interesting to see what people do with finances. And then also it's a game. So you can relax, let your hair down and enjoy. And typically we try to do these type of things with people that we like that we're looking to influence as well or have some influence over us. So let's talk about this. Does anybody know what cash flow is the game? Raise your hand. Okay, a few of you. I'll, I'll tell you, I've, I've known about cash flow for a long time and played with my kids. Um, cash flow was, it was, you guys heard of Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad? Yeah? Okay, okay, good. He created a game that's very, very similar to Monopoly and it's more real life. And what happens is you might be, um, you might pick a card and Fred might be a doctor and then I might be a plumber. Well, as we go through life, I have, you know, I have certain income that I have. And if I have a kid, it only costs me so much. Well, I don't have student loans, but Fred's the doctor. So he has tons of student loans that he has to over overcome. Obviously he has a lot more income than me. When he has a kid, it gets really expensive because kids are expensive, right? And, and, and it's neat with this cash flow game it, is it, it gets you in, in, in more of a real life situation. And so Fred's been doing cash flow games in the physical sense for a while now. And I think he's brilliant and I'm, I'm looking to do that myself. But then the idea of this cash flow, you can set up, you can go, I think it's cashflow.com, right? Is, is the website? Yes. And you absolutely. can set up a private party on there and you can have and have a passcode on it and you can have up to six participants so that's one that's one of the key things it's only limited to six but you could sit down am i right fred or is that wrong yeah actually it's rich dad it's richdad.com there you go the richdad.com okay and mm -hmm. it's limited to six but you can get six people online you can do it as a zoom party so you have the social interaction and play cash flow i have not done it yet but it's definitely something that I'm going to be implementing. I'm looking to do next week because we got to figure out a way to, to have these interactions and have the, 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 this party thing going on. So that's, that's something in the zoom party space to think about. I know that's not why we're here to talk about, so let's keep going. So before we get there to the, the talking about time blocking, Fred, why don't you talk about these things? Person 10, our power network stacking in the white space. So, Let's start backwards. I wanna start at the bottom, the white space. What is that? That is your grace. We talked about this earlier and you gotta understand as you start to work through this, where are you gonna need grace at? So this is very interesting uh, from the perspective of working backwards. So to go to the first and 10, talk about that. It's very simple. It's your first and 10 calls, your proactive calls in the morning. They're all outbound. They're calls that you need to make actually I have a first and 10 memory drugger that I made uh, in order for specifically tailored for my business in order to make sure the night before with my pre-leave that we're getting that first and 10 ready. So you're cultivating those names onto a list the night before in order for your next day, just like you're planning your next day. Um, very simple for your hour of power. This is how you stay in touch with your, your core relationships. And if you see, Seven levels, these are your A's, your A pluses, and then your uh, your C's. And then your B's are your iffy, they're, they're gonna get shipped around and your D's are people that you put on drip or on an email. So with your hour of power, I really stay in touch with my A pluses. And that's based on a class I took with Neil. Um, why? Because you're gonna get your bang, biggest bang for your, a, uh, for your from your A pluses, if that makes sense. And by focusing on them more, I guarantee you, you're going to get more. Um, I did this last year, 2019. I didn't ignore the rest of my network, but I definitely focused on my top. And it changed the money I make. Um, like, like literally, it changed it completely. And then, um, and that's just to give you a very simple example of like the end game, the results. Like it really changed my money. And at the end of the day, we're doing all this to make an impact, not only in others' lives, but in ours as well. And then the network stacking. You can do this through Zoom right now. You don't have to meet. Um, I'm not going to lie. I have disobeyed some of COVID rules. 
<laughs> well, I'm not coughing. Well, I do this is being time. recorded, so Fred, don't don't admit that. <laughs> I'm a self-incriminating right now, huh? No. Um, so yeah, network stacking is very simple. Again, these are with your 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 hour power calls. It should typically lead to, hey, look, what are you doing next month or next week or within the next two weeks? and set up a meeting, a one-on-one, to really dig into the relationship of them. Um, how's work, frog, basically. How's work, how's life, how's family? Uh, any new goals, any goals I can help you meet? What's your biggest challenge right now? And, and these are Michael's questions that we're using. This is all Michael's framework. So yeah, absolutely. with that being said, I think that sums it up. Does anybody have any questions here? Unmute yourself if you have a question in this space. No. Okay. Okay, good. Well, it sounds like everybody, a lot of people know it. So what I want you guys to do is I want you to get a yellow pad of paper. Okay. Yellow pad. Hey, no, uh, we have yep. a 10 by 10. Can you repeat 10 by 10 by shows? We had that come up in the chat box. Uh, what okay, do you mean you by 10 by that? 10? Uh, the first and 10, the first and 10, very simple um, to put it in detail. Um, any transactions you're working on, I follow up with those first and ten. Um, if you're in a space to, of a realtor, a buyer and seller, uh, title company, anything where you need to make an outbound call on to check in on or to that's related to your business uh, from the transaction standpoint, that's why I use the first and ten for. And it could be uh, ten before ten. But it depends on you what time you start your your work, okay. right? Okay. So it's the very what what tactically do you need to do with your business that, that are important calls, and you're going to be setting this up the night before, okay? And then so our you, power. Go ahead. Do you have any suggestions for a new realtor? We have a question here for a newbies that are looking to uh, implement but don't have enough work to implement everything. Well, I, it goes through, uh, hopefully you're doing the daily dose with Michael and you're doing, and you've identified your top 25 and then your top 50 and your top 75 and what have you. You got, you need to be, to understand this gated community. Who are the people, if you, and that, if you had tickets, free tickets to a movie, who are the first, and you, I gave you 25 tickets, who would be the first 25 that you would talk to or invite, excuse me. And then you say, okay, all of a sudden they opened up another 25. Who would be the next 25 that you would invite? Okay. And then there's another 25. And then who would be the next 25? And then you next, so you've now had a better target. And if you're brand new, there's a lot of different strategies on this. There's, you have to understand where you, uh, and we're not going to go into this today. Um, if you want, email me and we can talk a little further. But uh, if you're brand new, you got to identify and get a relationship with these people and understand is if, if they were, needing a realtor, are you the realtor that they would use? Okay. Sometimes that's hard to do right up front, right? Cause you just kind of start talking to them and, and touching base with them. Okay. I hope that helped. Um, so going back to this, so you, everybody have a notepad. Okay. Notepad or a piece of paper. It doesn't matter. So what we're going to do is we're going to start. What's what time do you start in the morning work? Put down that time. Okay. I don't see everybody writing. Sean, you don't look like you're writing. Are you stuck, Sean? Uh, anyways, uh, so what time are you going to start? Okay. The next thing is for, let's just, let's just pick on tomorrow. What time are you going to end? Okay. And the next piece that I say, well, are you going to eat lunch? Right. You're going to put that in. Then you're going to put in what, uh, obviously you're starting off first and 10. And I don't know, like I have team meetings in the morning, different, I'm teaching 30 mornings right now. My morning starts a little different than it normally does with, with not teaching it right now. But I, I sneak in a team meeting at 8.30 in the morning, okay? And then nine o'clock I have a national sales call and I just, I just start, it just starts trickling down. But do you have any calls that are mandatory that or that you need to do for your team, okay, or for your company and what have you, right? 
hopefully you have time for the daily dose, right? That's another piece as well. Okay, the other piece is um, first and 10, right? We're, can you get can you get that done the first thing that you're doing in your day? Can you get that first and 10 in? And then you're defining, okay, hour of power. Can you spend can you spend some time reaching out, Zoom calls, phone calls, text, what have you, and you know, with, with your with your sphere of influence or your gated community. Tommy, who's on this call, had a great call today with Michael in the Daily Dose on this. And so I thought it'd be fabulous to, to do that. What can you do to touch base with people? Okay, and then you, you might have some scheduled callback times, depending on your, your, your day and, and what have you. You might gotta plug those in, okay? And this is a cheat sheet, you'll see it on the screen. You'll see kind of what we can do this. And we have a lot of these slides if you want a copy of this, and then I even have a blank one as well, okay, for you. But so you're gonna be putting these in, and then when are you returning calls? When are you gonna be doing emails and stuff? One of the big things is white space. I, I don't want you to schedule out your day so perfectly that you don't have time to, to, to do anything if something else comes up, okay? Does anybody have any questions here? Yeah, Neil, on Tuesday from, um, do you, you just stop at five, you don't take appointments on Tuesday or is that just white space? Uh, it, it, it just, well, I mean, it just depends on you. This is just a sample schedule. This is not my yeah. schedule. Okay. This is just, it just depends on you. I mean, if, 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 if you're crushing it and you want to do every, every night, you can. It's totally, th this is just a framework mm. for a schedule. That's all it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Obviously we're not doing, you, you probably aren't going to be doing appointments right now. Right. No. Lesser. And so unless they're online. So this is just a sample. So just realize that what is your sampling? What, what is your doing? Okay. Mm -hmm. Neil, where it says email slash PWR, what does the PWR represent? Power notes. Right. And you don't necessarily have to do it then, but it's just reminding you, you got to write some handwritten notes. Great question. Any other questions? Okay. Good. Good. So, also, Noah, can I interject one thing? Yeah. Um, yeah as much again, as this is really based off of the your communication plan. So, if you haven't identified who's your A pluses, your A's, your your B's, your C's, and your D's, this really has no value, or I shouldn't say no value. It has very little value. And like the first and 10, that's more transactions. However, your hour and power, your lunches, who are you having lunch with? Are you having lunch? Why are you having lunch? Uh, all that stuff, your return calls, who are you having your appointments with? Are they important to you and are you appointing to them? And that's how you discover that through, through grading your contacts. So I just wanted to let everyone know that's the base of this. You got to have your contacts graded. By the way, you can have a Zoom lunch too, by the way. I like that. Right? You can easily have a Zoom lunch. And that's one of my uh, mentors a long time ago taught me. She said, you got to eat. So if you eat, you might as well be talking. You might as well have lunch with somebody when, when, it was a, when it's a normal world, right? And so I, I personally feel like um, breaking bread with somebody and getting to know them is, is so much more powerful. And so I, I actually really cherish my lunch times. Does everybody feel comfortable here at this point? How does how, how does your day look like? Anybody want to talk? Hmm. No? I Crickets. got it. Okay. Um, Go ahead. Hey. Hey, Neil. Hey, Fred. Long time no see. How y'all doing? I know. Good to see you. Well, this time I'm actually sitting for your presentation. Last time I had to stand. Oh, um, uh, there you go. In Atlanta. But um I my challenge is um, so just with our business, 
there tends to be client, some days where there are client fire after client fire after client fire and things just keep getting bumped down to the point where it's now six o'clock at night and I still have emails to return. I still have phone calls to make. And, and I know it's more of a mental thing versus a scheduling thing, but you know, as far as shifting that stuff to the next day, how do you all, have you all managed and coped with that? So why don't you talk to Josh a little bit? What do you do? Um, so I'm a health insurance broker. Okay. Got it. And, uh, I hate to say health insurance broker. Is that, I was going to say, is somebody going to die if you didn't call them right back? But I need health insurance, so that it's not that's a bad joke. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah my actually, uh... <laughs> so my my question though would be, Josh, is um, is is there anything that's so pressing that you have to talk to them right now? Sometimes, yeah. But actually, that's a that's a good thing to ask, even just as far as just taking calls and or delegating calls to the next day, because there are some issues that they are time sensitive, but they can possibly wait. Where are there are others, you know, joking aside that they have to get done right away. No, absolutely. And then the other question is, is can you, can you delegate any tasks? I mean, we all are the best at what we do, right? But, is there anything you could delegate to somebody to handle that part of it with your team? Yeah, it depends. <laughs> but so, so yes and no. honestly, yes and no. So some okay. things, some things, yes, and some things, no. Um, it, it, okay. it all, but yeah, I'm sorry. I, I know I'm. <laughs> no, don't be sorry. This is, I'm sure other people have this thing. Cause you know, I, I mean, you know, in the real estate space, they have escrows closing, right? That are very, sometimes it's very, very pressing. And, and the lender side, I have loan locks to deal with and all these different things. My challenge though is how pressing is it? And I mean, could you potentially, whatever, let's say it's email, could you turn off your email for an hour? Or let's just even go a half hour of power. Could you turn off your email for a half hour and you just committed to calling a few people. Yeah, and, and I guess with fires and with, with what I do, and <laughs> it's where it, sometimes it is difficult where my fires are, I, I, I'm on the phone with carriers and you know other insurance companies and trying to get things yeah. figured out for clients. So it's like my phone call time, I don't even consider influential zone because I'm just trying to solve issues. So um, yeah. But no, but well, to answer I, I, your question, yes, that that's actually really what you actually, you actually answer my question without you knowing it or not, but just asking myself that even when it comes to picking up the phone um, in dedicated time, if I get a call from a client that is a super pressing issue, yeah, but I, I think I need to do better about really qual you know quantifying my time with if i if i get a call that somebody says it's urgent but i listen to the message and it, it can wait i need to do a better job of respecting my time and even if it's just texting them and say hey i'll give you a call tomorrow morning you know it, like it, you actually brought up something to remind me of something i learned years ago um is callback times and i used to change my voicemail it says you know hey today is uh, April 9th, uh, I am in the office today. I am returning phone calls from 10.30 to 11 and 3.30 to 4. And guess what? Now, it's not I'm returning the call at your earliest convenience or my earliest convenience because now you've changed expectations. And so if I have time to call because I know it's really urgent, it actually gives me an opportunity to call them before my callback time and say, hey, you know what? I just had a free moment. I just wanted to, I know I called back 1030, but it's, it's, it's 10 right now. And I had an extra moment. Now you have, you just set an expectation and then you now, it over exceeded the expectation. Yeah, Does that awesome, make sense? Neil. Yeah. I want to add something here. 
So, uh, Josh, uh, there's something I do. It's called the Eisenhower Matrix. It got four quadrants. And um, uh, I'm, I'm a little stickler with organization there. Um, what just a little, is, by the way, you guys. He, Fred, don't look little, Fred is uh, organizing freak. He's awesome. It, the, the, I'm not, I'm not. But, uh, yeah, so what I do is I write down everything in this emergency going to first box because the quote goes like this. Uh, um, things that are urgent are certainly important, and things that are important are certainly urgent. Make sense? And the important things moves us towards our goals. The urgent things, it keeps us really stagnant because if we constantly responding to other people needs uh, when, when they want us to, what happens is you're not gonna move forward in your business overall, your growth. And you're definitely looking for growth. So I will identify what are emergencies for you specifically overall, what are, what are plan items overall, what are things that you can delegate overall and things that, yeah, and then at that point, once you see it, try to focus on the planned items. And when crises come up, like Neil said, like try to put it within a time frame, like throughout your day, like the callbacks. Um, Tommy said that on chats as well. Try to put it within a time frame. Then you'll be, it'd be very simple. I know some people, uh, the adjustment, if they're used to, for you to call them back, I had a lot of people like, man, why aren't you calling me back? I'm like, I am but at a certain time. So that yeah. it's a new behavior. So you got to get a grace for them, for them to address. And there will be some madness there in just a little bit. <laughs> uh, absolutely. And, and what he was, he called it the Eisenhower. I actually, I got it from Stephen Covey in the four quadrants yep. and that's what's up here. And that's what this yep. reminds me of, right? The four quadrants, you know? And then I, I, was, I, I, was, I, I was just looking at, I was like, is that the same thing? Yeah. Uh, same thing. Yeah. Okay. Just called that, that makes it's, sense. It's, it's, sorry, you know, sorry to hold the time. Well, in that regard, no. so putting off time. So for me, because then I'll, I'll stay up and it's funny listening to Sandy Creston. She's like, just stay up all night, just do it. Like when she talks about um, <laughs> categorizing people. But for yep. me, um, I mean, I guess, is it worth it to just like we have, we're still working on some systems so that we can start to release some of this stuff get it off of our plate i mean would you all i don't know if you're condoning it or not but like would it just be worth blocking out this a few days to just dedicate solely to kind of quadrant two time and say i am just going to build out systems if it's an absolute emergency dial this number if not just delegate it um i'm not and, and i'll Dep shut up depends that. on how many systems you're trying to break out um you know uh there's i definitely think blocking out several hours is really important uh and then even i hate to say it but if, if you don't get calls the emergency calls on saturdays or sundays and you could you could block out some time there where you you know you're not going to be getting they don't expect you to be calling them back that's another place to go but our point of this is that that the hour of power is critical absolutely critical to call your top clients here's the neat thing and i i, I heard this from sandy creston we had, we were at a, a, one of the CRT trainings and this guy, younger guy comes up and he talks about how he talks to 40 people a day. And I mean, younger guy, enthusiastic, a lot of energy. And I just got tired thinking about those old days because I'm, I'm now really old. Uh, but I got tired of thinking about those old days where I was just grinding on the phone, grinding on the phone. And Sandy comes up and she has her, her whole thing. She knows how many A pluses are, and how many A's are and all of this stuff. And she figured out that she needed to do 3.2 calls a day to her hour of power. And the whole thing was, would you rather do 40 or 3.2? And Sandy, Sandy crushes it. Yes. No. Any questions there? Thank you. So, so that's the basics, okay, of this. Now, this is the, the extra secret sauce, and this is the hard part of this time blocking, because you, like you said, you can set up a time block, but this whole thing is about influential zone, so, so important. And this is the exercise that it takes some time to do. So what I want you to do is you've planned out your ultimate week, right? Then I want you to get a blank time block schedule let's say you start at 9 a.m., okay, and you're gonna put an alarm on your phone. I just happen to have an iPhone, so two hours. 
boom, what did I, and then you're gonna write down what, what did you do, okay? So hold on, we got a question, question from Shaylee, go ahead. Sorry, so um, it was partially question and partially um, comment, you know, I, I spend a lot of time setting expectations at the very beginning with my clients. And the first expectation that I set is I say to them, just like right now when I'm sitting with you and I'm not taking telephone calls and I'm not checking my text messages, you know, I'm going to give that same respect to the, to other people. And so you'll always know when I'm going to get back to you and I might be able to get back to you sooner, but you know, if it's an emergency, 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 you can always get in touch with me. And you know, if you're a doctor, there's no such thing as saying, I'll get back to you tomorrow when somebody calls you and says, you know, um, my kids stop breathing. But in most of our businesses, people actually respect you if you set the expectation up front. It's really hard to change people once they don't, you know, once they've gotten used to reaching you 24 seven. Um, but I just really find that with time blocking, especially my biggest issue is, is that I take those time blocks that I set aside for myself and I, and I don't honor those. And so I just wanted to really ask, you know, how do you, <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's like that how question, how do those time blocks, you know, the time when I said, you know, I'm going to take care of myself, I'm going to go do this for myself, or I'm going to, you know, do my morning ritual instead of, you know, jumping into somebody's issue right away. What's, is there like a trick to make sure that you respect the time that you time block for yourself as much as you respect the time that you time block for your clients? That's a great question. Um, for me, um, like the workout, and that's why Shaylee and I are doing the 30 mornings together. Um, I, I got off the, the rhythm of, of, working out in the morning with this whole thing that's happened right i've had to change it up and and that time for myself has been great because like this morning i got 30 minutes on my elliptical that's the most i've exercised the last three weeks and so i feel better today than i felt all if i finally gave myself that time so i think first time in the morning doing the morning a ritual is so so important because it's setting up your day now I haven't walked enough with my wife. I haven't walked the dog enough. I, I've been working way too much. And so that's what's been really hot, tough for me is I, the, the stuff that happens later in the day, I haven't been as good about. And because I've been so busy with all these different commitments I've had, for me personally, that's why I like the morning and getting it done beforehand. And I hope that helps. Now, one of the things you actually triggered that made me think of something uh, is uh, somebody told me this a while ago. Had you rather be uh, always available, okay, or worth the wait. So had you rather known to be always available or worth the wait? Go ahead, Fred. No, I like that. That's, that, that's. Oh, I got to jump. That's, that's so good. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's mic drop for me right there. Yeah. That's so good. Good. So that, that's really, really important. Always available or worth the wait. Because I used to always be available and, and to be honest with you, boundary wise, I'd have calls with clients and unfortunately real estate agents at 10, 10 30, 11 o'clock at night. And I just, it was, it was running my life kind of ragged. And unfortunately that wasn't healthy. So that's a big one here. So again, two hour alarm clock. Okay. And Fred, why don't you talk a little bit about this? Cause Fred, Fred took this, my advice when you do this exercise, it takes a few, quite a few weeks to get it, your legs under you. But, and I, then I do a re, I redo, I do this myself every six months just to kind of see where I'm at. So Fred, why don't you talk a little bit about this? Okay, so it's very simple. Most phones have uh, what we call alarms and we just set up an individual alarm for each time block to make sure that you're staying on time. It's, it's almost like a gut check, um, but without it being your gut, it's your phone. And <laughs> The, the, the main thing is to understand, again, the grace, because there is not a lot of times that you're going to complete 80% of your day. There are going to be some times because of a, it's a real crisis, you may complete 60%. And I remember Neil gave us an, um, he said, look, just shoot for 60%, 80% um, when we was in a class. 
And what that did for me, even though I have it on my phone, it allowed me not to necessarily ignore those alerts, but it allowed me to understand like, okay, I'll get it next time. I can get it tomorrow. And yeah. really giving myself the proper grace to, to continue. So 60 to 80%, I think is is wonderful. One time I heard a statistic of like the average employee really works only two hours a day. And I don't know if that's true or where they pulled that data from, how they went about pulling it. But if that's anywhere near true, if you're completing 60%, I'm 100% sure you're outproducing most people or entrepreneurs or people that's independent contractors. I heard that with the average CEO only works two hours really in their zone. Interesting. So um, let's and so once you start doing the actual. So now what what I found is is uh, and Fred was guilty of this too. When he first gave me a schedule, I I did and Tommy you did this too. I had I figured out how much on a percentage basis each day. So if you worked eight hours, how many hours were spent? The goal was to spend in the influential zone. Okay. I forget what your guys' uh, starting block was for both you two. But uh, what I found is most people, their goal is to get 40% of their day, if that's what your measurable is, influential zone, 40% of their day is spent as a goal in the influential zone. Okay. And what ends up invariably happening, even though you know you're going to track it, it ends up being about 20% about half of whatever your goal is that day to be in the influential zone or whatever that measurable is, it ends up being half. And so several of you have heard me present this before. And so my thought is, and I firmly believe this, and it's, it's, it's totally happened in my own business, is that if I then take that 20% or wherever I'm at and I double it, I now am doubly influencing, okay? And that means my income, Josh, right, is double. And so that's the part of it that you have to think about is, do you want to double your income? Well, the, what, how you're going to do it is whatever that measurable that has the most impact in it, in your, in your life or in your workspace, can you double that? Because then you can even go crazy and say, my gosh, if I went from 20% to 60%, you've now tripled your income or tripled your influence, which will then in turn... I think, you know, have a great profound effect. Okay. And to it, add to that, that it gets, it gets rough with your day to days as well. Your other things that you have to complete almost gets to a point where you have to hire an assistant. Um, and then they have to do this as well too, or you have to do that for them. So yeah, that's a whole another conversation. Well, so then this next part, Fred, Fred actually struggled with this. So Fred, if you guys haven't figured out, he's a big thinker. And, uh, and so Fred said, what's that day rating thing at the bottom? And, and I said, what do you mean? I go, just rate your day. How, how do you feel? And he goes, well, do I quantify it by the percentage of time that I did and whatever? And do I got all hyper analytical on me? I'm like, no, I'm like, get out of your head. Just get out of your head. How did you feel? And that took you a couple of weeks, Fred. Yeah. yeah. You, so feelings, we don't allow to emerge much. We try to, as, as entrepreneurs, workers, push past them. So that was kind of new to me. How did I feel about my day, if that makes sense? Unless, unless it, I felt like it was a bad day. Yeah. Well, and you, you finally picked it up, and I think you got it, and, you, and it really helped you, I think. So, so as Fred and I were preparing for this, I'd asked him to come aboard and, and do this with us. Because Fred is, uh, he did, he really got a lot of benefit from this. So Fred, why don't you tell me, tell us all, like how long did you keep doing this when you first heard, when you first learned about it? A uh, very long time. Uh, <laughs> I did it up to six months. I was trying to get the habit. So understanding habits are be, uh, goes back to behaviors and in order to really channel them, there's only a couple ways. Is something need to change with you, within you. And the best way to do that is repetitiveness. And for me, I kept up to almost six months beyond that to, to make sure that I was understanding what I'm doing, getting into the habit, the feeling of it, to fill it, to actually fill it, to soak in, 
And to be able to, like, the next day, I'm just doing it now. I'm doing it. And then Neil told me to also, hey, you might want to take uh, the course again in another six months to make sure that you, you're, you're covering everything. And I was like, yeah, that, that makes sense. And again, the reason why I even said, yeah, is because, or yes, is because of what Neil said, is it, or what happened, I should say, the results that came from this was, again, my business took off. Like, my business took off on a whole nother level. And I feel like I've gotten lazier because I'm moving a lot slower, but it's a lot more precise, if that makes sense. Absolutely. That really does. Does anybody have any questions about this? Comments? No? Okay. I do. Okay, shoot. Um, so on my day, I'm a morning person and I can get a lot done by like noon. And then I'm just stuck with like, well, what do I do after that? Like if there's no like uh, appointments or whatnot, like I'm just like, ah, whatever. So any insight on like how to be more prepared for that time? Cause like, I don't always need the white space because I've kind of like got done for the day and then there's no activity so planned. Mo Monique, what do you do? Do you share with everybody? Real estate agent. Okay. Um, I think it goes back to this. I don't want to be I, in corporate think, America, so. No, do you see That's this? That's my why. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. so like, I don't have that typical why. I'm like, well, I'm not married. I don't have kids. So it's not like I'm going to go hang out with them. Yep. So like well, my no, wife it's, it's just, just what not it to is go to, to you. corporate America. So. Well, and so you cool have to, to look at your wife. The rest of the afternoon. Uh, that's fine. If you're crushing yeah. it, are you where you are, where you want to be income wise? Well, no, I'm at the Air Force right now. So when I oh, get okay. back. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Well, then that's different, right? Because the Air Force, well, you're, you, this is, this time blocking stuff is perfect for you guys. Like Fred, I was in the military as well. And he, uh, and I, I think definitely it teaches you the regiment that you need. And so the question is for you, I, what do you want to do? If you can get it done, everything done before noon. Okay. That's awesome. That's awesome. If that's what you want to achieve and that's where everybody's different. And I've coached people that the goal was, is that they're, they have kids and they want to only work 20 hours a week. Okay. Well, let's, let's crush the 20 hours when you're, when you're on, you're on and do it. And that's, that's a really important, important thing. So good question. All right. I think it's okay to work up to noon, especially if you're hitting everything back to back. I, I think that's okay because there's, there, okay. There is white space, but everybody don't need white space. Okay. It depends on who you are, what you're doing, which how your life is set up. So I think that goes back to you asking yourself a question. Uh, have you did everything for the day that you feel like you could do for the day? And, and that's without trying to squeeze it, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Because then There's the next step more is. more that can be done. Yeah. Well, then the next step is, is that if you're doing this and you're hitting really, really well, it's kind of like going to the gym. If you're doing it consistently, and you're doing well, but you want to take that next step, well, you maybe do more specialized training, right? So what happens, uh, you put kerosene on this fire, is like Tommy, Do Tommy does an event. When Eventually, when this life comes back, he puts kerosene on the fire by doing an event. And that's where we really are going to go with all of this, is we're going to get back on this. And I think that's what, I would have several events teed up right now for when we get through this, because people are going to have the need to see other people. And so that's one of the challenges I'd have for everybody here is make sure to have those events, the space you want to be, what your budget is, all of that, you're, who you're going to invite, everything about that. I think that's going to be really, really important. So um, any other questions at this point? No? Okay. So that's the basic schedule. Now, one thing we can do, and it's really up to you guys, if, if this is something you want to take on, uh, put yes in the, in the box. I have no problem. I think, Fred, you probably won't have a problem either. If you want to do this, 
for a couple weeks and we could re revisit and do more of a Q&A of what you've learned, I would have no problem doing that, okay? So yeah, if you wanna do that, definitely we can do this. And because here's the thing, there, there's so much to this piece and then, and there's so many things and you're gonna have a lot of questions as you go through this exercise. I think two weeks is probably a good time. It gives you two weeks to get your schedule and what have you. You can always email me questions as well. Like, here's my schedule, what do you think? And I, I can spend, you know, give me a little bit of grace right now. I'm a little busy, but I, you know, tweak it a little bit. But the whole hope is doing a Q and A in two weeks what was it like? Actually, you know what? Three might be better because you'll have two full weeks of doing it. So uh, three weeks, I think probably be better and see how you guys will get through it. I think that's a really important thing. So there's a lot of yeses. So I guess uh, this is definitely something to help. And I, like I told you, Fred is, um, he, he got in so much benefit and it was so cool when he had called me a couple months after we did the class and he's like, Neil, this thing is awesome. This, it, it actually worked, you know? I'm like, yeah, it, it works. It, it absolutely does work. So talk about that. Okay, so what, what I also want you to do is after you've done the week, you've been analyzed it, I want you to spend alone time on Monday morning or Sunday night, and then I want you to circle everything that was in the influential zone that you did, okay? In the influential on what you actually did, and then the goal is 80%. Did you get okay that the, well, the goal is 80 percent of your influential zone but did you hit it okay and can you do this four weeks in a row two times a year can you do a self-evaluation piece and that's that's the extra sauce with this training that i have never seen in any other time blocking course there's has been, never been accountability ever and that's what this is about is creating you to have accountability if you have a buddy or accountability partner in this this would be great to do with your, your accountability partner we talk about in the daily dose and do it together. It would be absolutely fabulous. We're gonna have this recorded so you can come back to it as well. I'm not sure exactly how we're gonna get it out to you all, but we're gonna have this recorded so you can go back and look through this and figure out what you can do to, um, to get better, okay? And here's, here's the thing, I love this slide. I'm a big snowboarder and, for, and Squaw Valley is like two hours away and, and I can't, didn't get to do any turns this, this season. But have the courage. What would your life be like if you had no courage to attempt anything? And that's why I want to challenge you. We have time on our hands right now. I know things are a little topsy-turvy, but if you can create some habits right now that will get you ready for when this thing opens up, it, it will be transformative. I really, I promise you on that. I really do. And here's Fred and here's my information. Okay. Uh, Fred, do you have anything to add? Because we got to worry about time here a little bit. Um, yes, uh, real quick. Uh, see your hour, see your day, see your week, see your, your quarter, see your year. It all starts with the hour, and then it goes and it builds. Uh, Neil, in the beginning of this, he mentioned having two events and how things change um, and how far they was planned out. If you heard it, it was quarters. So if you see that, that all starts with understanding your, your hours and your days. That's it. Oh, great, great. And, and here, I'm gonna sneak this slide in. This was from the last time Fred and I did a presentation in Atlanta. And I saw this as we were getting ready. And this is when Michael has uh, the Referral Mastery Summit planned in Scottsdale. And I was sitting there going, oh man, I would love to be in Scottsdale right now. This would be so awesome. I don't, hopefully we're gonna have this event, who knows? But uh, Michael doesn't even know I'm, I'm sharing this. And so, but I just wanted to let you know that if you guys go through this journey and you wanna learn a little bit more and get a little bit more out of, out of 7L and what it's about, we are gonna have this event uh, eventually. And hopefully it's in October, that would be awesome. That would be great. So I just wanna leave it that. Uh, with, in closing, does anybody have a question before we leave? We got a minute, couple minutes. Hey, uh, Neil, I had, I kind of opened a bag of worms in chat. Um, oh. I mentioned a tool called ScudPal, but I think it's okay. something that'll be better after you guys have gone through the exercise of the awareness that's, that's going to come as a result. But what ScudPal does is like, I, I, I um, have a very full schedule. So I have to work on projects that I can move forward and then also make sure to be hitting the influential things, right? And then on top of that, like I've had a contract work on the side. So I have to balance like three priorities. And so what I, what I did, this tool allows you to take a task like 
um, like, I don't know, I'm going to make um, three training videos and put it in and then it'll schedule it into blocks that you set up. And then if something comes up on any given day, let's say I just decide I want to go to Walt Disney World and take the day off. If I just, if I do, I can project what impact that's going to have on my due date for that project based on the decision I'm making in this moment. So it gives you wow. total clarity. Yeah, it's, it's really powerful because you always know the consequence of your decision literally right there. You can block the time on Google and then it'll shift your whole setup and then, and then it'll tell you, boop, 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 hot list, you, you know, your, your item's going to be at risk. So it allows you to um, manage that ebb and flow of, of, or in another case, client fires. It allows you to manage that ebb and flow uh, while at the same time um, trying to keep to that, to that schedule. So that's a tool that I use because I was like, I need priority management more than anything. Can you send that to me, please? And I yeah. can share it with yeah. you. Bro. Sure. That'd be great. Okay. Yeah. Like, any, anybody else have anything? Well, I want to thank you all. I know it's crazy days and crazy times, and I really appreciate you all coming here, and I really hope that we made a difference today. So, Fred, do you have anything else? Yeah, I hope you got something, and I learned something from Tommy, so, yeah. Yeah, sure. thank you, Tommy. I really appreciate you all. Yeah, you're welcome. Well, you guys, take care. Take care. We'll see you later. Bye. See you. Thanks, Neil. Thank you so much. You're welcome.